Gayen uh, Kiorofano. Um, I trust you can all hear me all right. Just a wave. Excellent. Fantastic. Great to see where everyone's from across the country. Well, that's remarkable. Well done being here after daylight savings too. I, I don't know about you, but I feel like it might be 9.15, not uh, 8.15, but, uh, but there we go. Hey, well, Hope Project, um, I'll just share a couple of things. We'll look at a couple of slides. I'll share a couple more, and, and hopefully it's just encouraging uh, for our outreach and to fuel our prayers, not only here today, uh, but, but beyond this as well, for outreach across our nation. Um, our own work, the Shining Lights Trust, uh, was set up just to enable a small team of people uh, to do a work trying to identify gaps in the outreaching efforts of the New Zealand Church as a whole, uh, so as to look at how to bring strategic innovation into those gaps. So we have what's called our six strategic pillars, that's six areas where we've identified strategic gaps in what the church as a whole does in the outreach sphere. And then we've probably got around about 20 different innovations. Um, the Hope Project's the largest and the most well-known of those. And the Hope Project, if we just bring up that first picture, please, Gayen. Um, this is just a new little graphic we created for someone's promotion. Uh, we've envisaged three media projects per year, and each of these has come about with a specific thought in mind. Um, the first two is around Easter and Christmas, and just looking at how we might keep Christ within these seasons. Uh, we've, we've been in a culture where they are deliberately trying to secularize, that is de-Christianize, the public square, and also these religious seasons. And, and our freedoms of speech and religion are very much a case of use it or lose it. So, so Hope Project, two of its three efforts sit inside that space. And just to read those white lines very quickly, at Christmas, it's about restoring nativity scenes to visibility nationally to keep the Christ in Christmas. Uh, and for Easter, the larger effort, it's about churches getting the Christian message of hope through booklets to most homes nationally, plus the TV and web media. Churches can prayer walk every residential street of each of their cities and towns. It's a volunteer-based delivery in 90 cities and towns. So, so God's church really is amazing. Uh, and it's an opportunity that we can all leverage for conversational outreach equipping uh, through our pulpits, small groups, and youth groups. Just to jump you on to that, uh, the next slide, um, Hope Project, therefore, has a few dimensions to it. And the question is always what we can leverage something for. Uh, on the right here, you see five of the websites that exist. And they all connect in some way to the wider vision. Um, the Hope Project website itself is for people who are far from Christianity, who wouldn't really go near to a church. It's very gentle in its messaging. It talks about Christ at Christmas and Easter, but sometimes nothing about Christianity in other seasons, just talking at the, about the theme of hope. If people investigate, online platforms and media will direct them across to the 10-day challenge, which is a challenge to watch a five-minute video, read a Bible verse, and consider some questions uh, each day, 10 days in a row. Um, so that website is for those who are ready to look into what Christianity might be about. Altogether.co.nz, by contrast, is to resource and help churches. Godtalk.nz provides equipping resources for youth leaders and their youth ministries, where, where Altogether provides it for pulpits and small groups. Mm -hmm. And Help Project is the final of the efforts that we haven't started, but uh, we've done a lot of groundwork. To jump to the next slide, um, help project, which you won't know about yet. Um, the, this next slide is six of the different sort of branding ideas, and you'll see how the brand directly connects. And the simple idea is that in Christianity, the help and the hope have to go together. The works of love are, are our calling, but to spread the gospel of Jesus, what he has done at the cross, that is the core mission that we are given, but these things are inseparable. So for the next um, graphic, where hope project is about the message Help Project is about connecting around people's uh, felt material needs and to really reflect what churches already do so that story is told. Um, to jump to the next slide, um, please. I've forgotten what's on it, you see, so I'm stuck. <laughs> Here we go. That's it. So the, the, the heart actually summarizes the entire effort, which I hope we start the proper data collection for uh, in one year's time. But uh, the, the center of the heart to shine a light on the good works local churches do to help people so they can see and engage with that help. So in short, it's about promoting the many things churches do, which is far greater than most would realize, to help within communities. But that gives an opportunity to talk about it and to tell the story. And this problem we have in the public square of our nation is, of course, that our negative stories are told, but not the positive. And so public perspective will be that Christianity is an irrelevance and dead and even bad for society unless we speak up and engage on their platforms, on their TV channels and so on and so forth. So um, just to, to finish with the slides there, uh, back to myself, Gayen, 
So that's where I, I think for us to engage in public media platforms um, it, it is really important as a part of what we do. And I'll give you some statistics on that soon. In terms of prayer, a first area would be to thank God for things that are happening. But I, I want to share just some of the different dynamics that sit within this. Um, Hope Project, because of the volunteer delivery, um, kind of requires churches to work together beyond the prayer and the relationship and the cups of tea and coffee to actually do something functional together in a coordinated way, collaborating. And it's just remarkable what the church has shown itself capable of. It's a prayer walk. It's obviously the gospel to homes, but it catalyzes uh, gospel equipping. Uh, conversational skills are being taught, uh, imitating Jesus uh, in pulpits and in small groups, and as I've mentioned, in youth groups as well. And so you've got tens of thousands of people certainly being equipped by their pastors and small group leaders and youth leaders each year catalyzed within this. The booklets also beyond the homes catalyze various other things. Uh, so there's many benefits. You've got the, the passionate outreach people who want to go and talk to strangers on the street and it gives them a reliable or a, or a resource they can be confident in. And they find people are familiar with the booklets and oh, I love these or hey, I've already got that one. Do you have any others? I want one of the others. And so now we've got people who are trying to collect the full set and who contact us naming three booklets that they don't have, um, asking if we could post those out to them. Uh, of course, you've got youth involved and pre-COVID, half the churches um, partnering with us, we, we surveyed and found that they involved their youth in the delivery at some level, which again is just phenomenally wise from a discipleship point of view, giving them experiences. Uh, in terms of stories, I'll just change on my own screen here. Um, I mean, just today from my emails, a person wrote requesting a hard copy of the Bible. I would love to receive this gift, please. I've never owned a Bible. I truly believe there's something I would love to learn. And having a Bible will give me the opportunity to learn. Uh, another lady introduced herself and telling us that she was prompted to contact us because a food parcel had a booklet in it, which she read. And um, we said, no problem, we can send you one. And she replied to say her great grandmother was a Christian believer. And uh, that's how she lived her life. She taught me the Lord's Prayer and she prayed before bedtime and in the morning and went to church each week. She was the most beautiful person. I've never read the Bible in its time. And so you see here an example of a great grandmother. Christian faith has skipped the, uh, the grandmother and it skipped the mother. But now you've got the, uh, the great granddaughter with a spiritual hunger, um, triggered by a booklet, but triggered, triggered by the example of her great grandma years earlier. Uh, today, another um, lady requested a booklet. She says, I'm a wife and a mother of young children. Uh, my parents never believed in the faith, but as I get older, I feel something is missing. I often find myself searching to try and find a Bible. I've never read one, nor do I know where to start. And so we've said to her, well, most certainly we can send a Bible across to you. And at the 10 day challenge, there's actually a series page with three other series. One of them's an overview of the Bible. So encouraged you to watch five, five minute videos, get an idea of what's in the Bible. And then I gave her some ideas on where to start and have offered, you know, um, if she can tell me which part of the city she's in to help her find some good churches near to her. Uh, from last year, a couple of favorite stories. One is from Blenheim. Uh, apologies if you've heard it before, but a lady uh, contacted to say, I've got an operation coming up. I'm feeling scared. So I've decided to pray. And just as I've decided to pray, here's this booklet in my letterbox. So uh, I want you to know it's especially that prayer at the end of the booklet that really meant something to me. And just as a final, um, a, um, an old man was in his bed and the booklet arrived and he told his daughter, um, who must have been a, the caregiver or something, please read this booklet out to me. So she read the entire booklet and then he said, please go back to that prayer and read that again. I want to pray that prayer. So, so at the grassroots, we know that this is, is making a difference, uh, but in multiple ways, connected also to unity and outreach equipping, uh, connected to youth, connected to helping outreach, connecting to business people, giving Christmas hampers with, with something of the gospel that's inside of it, connected to chaplains going into hospitals with something if someone asks a question. Prison chaplains would use it and, and many others. There's a couple of other thoughts also uh, on the value of what is achieved together. Consider all the community ministries of our churches, and I would venture to say that probably 90% of the outreach budgets of our local churches actually goes to community ministry, doing good works rather than to the communication of the Christian message itself. And in many churches, the Christian message itself isn't really very clearly in the mix at all when it comes to the many community ministries that they run. 
I would simply say that the booklets that sit inside letterboxes redeem the situation. Uh, something I think is a part of outreach if it's got the gospel somewhere connected. And so you've got the op shop and you've got the food bank. Let's say that for some reason don't connect a person to the gospel. The gospel arrives in the booklet. They know those good works were a Christian church. They know that this booklet comes from a Christian church. And so I think this sometimes we each do a different part of God's work. But all these different parts, they, they work together. And that helps people take those steps along their journey toward faith. I mentioned earlier public perspective. Is the Christian faith dead and gone? Uh, the public media these days don't give any airtime and profile to Christianity, or, or hardly any. Um, they do give some, but, but it's not much. The public would be right to think from what they hear that Christianity is just 15 old people in a few churches here and there, and that's really about it. Unless we speak up and do things like this, they don't really know very much about us or that we are here. So it makes a difference. In terms of population demographics, 16% of New Zealand, according to McCrindle Research and Peter Lynham separately, attend church regularly, meaning about every month um, or more. Uh, if we consider the non-church attending population, let's imagine that 10% of them have a Christian trying to be a witness to them around the message of what Christ has done. Let's imagine that our community ministries are connecting the gospel and the message of hope through Christ to people, connecting with maybe another 10% of our nation's non-church population, but both of those might be overstating it. But that would mean that 80% of the non-church attending population have no one trying to connect messages about our faith with them within an average year, except for innovation that we do to take the gospel beyond our immediate relationships and beyond um, the community ministries that we run. And that's where I'd highly esteem, for example, Life TV, which is an outreach program shaped with the non-Christian mind in mind, and then placed not only on the Christian channels, but paid for it to be on the secular channels on Prime TV, where the non-Christian might flick on the TV, because that's where they hang out, because they're not ready to cross the bridge to look at the Christian stuff yet. And that, again, of course, is where Hope Project is playing to be in the platforms where others are not, to connect with people in, in broad numbers through the TV, through the web, through the booklets, to catalyze thoughts. And just as a final um, little two thoughts, is religion bad for a society? If you hear 10 negative stories about Christianity for every one story, the public very quickly are developing a view that Christianity, it might have done some things in the past, but really it's bad for society. Look, it creates more trouble than it's worth, because that's true according to what they hear. But there are a thousand good stories for every negative story that's ever told. If we don't work to tell our own story, to engage in these platforms where we're being spoken against or simply neglected and overlooked, if we're not present to speak up for ourselves, no one's going to speak on our behalf. The Great Commission wasn't tell the people to come to you and make disciples of, of all people. It was go into all the world. That commission and that onus is upon us to find ways to go beyond our own safety zones of our own home and our family, our immediate friends, and even of our local churches, to connect with those who are beyond. We need to be broken by the heart of Jesus, who, who looked upon the crowns and his heart was genuinely filled with compassion. And that's the compassion that moved him to, to leave heaven and its security and safety for himself, to limit himself to a human body, to, to pour his life out for us at the cross. And that same heart needs to be in us. And that, that's what drives us. The very final thought is just a, um, a quote, not directly quoted, from a book by David Geisler. So son of Norman Geisler, I got to know him uh, when I was a pastor in Singapore. Uh, he's now lecturing uh, somewhere in a college in America. But he simply wrote in a book, Conversational Evangelism. The goal isn't just to share the gospel. The goal is to help people every day and in every way to take steps toward Jesus. And I just put to you that that's what we're all here for. We must communicate the gospel. It's not outreach if the gospel isn't in it. That's essential. But there are many other parts to the wider picture of our outreach, including all of our community ministries. But it includes testimony to show that Christianity does make a positive difference. It includes the stories of history so people know Christianity has made a positive difference. It involves talking about the wonder of creation and the wonders of science and of the universe so people can see that this world has been purposefully created and made. All of these things, um, they come together to communicate and reveal a message to people. So for prayer items with that slide, Gayanne, and, and we're very quickly landed. First of all, let's thank God for the amazing unity, uh, the love, 
and the witness of his people across this nation. I think it is, uh, the church is really quite remarkable when you look at what's achieved even just in this one effort. Um, please, number two, pray that God's people would be enthused and equipped for their God-given mission as witnesses through their local churches. It's the role of the key leaders, the pastors and small group leaders, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, including conversational skills to engage with others. Pray regarding youth, that God would work amongst our youth and youth leaders for things, to unite them together, because they'll last, the youth leaders will last longer in a city or town if they connect to equip all of their youth for conversational witness, because it's hard in the school environment, to engage that mission in their schools, because that's the mission field for young people, and then to also, in the youth groups and with combined youth events, to run outreach events that can help attract people. So the relationship and the love and the events are all working together. We really need to pray for this. Um, and also in Easter, let's pray that God, number four, will draw people's hearts to himself. All of our efforts amount to nothing if the Holy Spirit doesn't touch and draw a heart. So we must do all that we can, but we can't bring a single person to know Christ. So pray for favor, not just upon Hope Project, but upon all Christian efforts and events across this coming weekend. Um, there's lots of different special services. There are churches running combined church Easter egg hunts that has, have the message in and a story and kids programs. That, there's all sorts of things going on. Let's pray for God's favor upon every one of them. Regarding Hope Project, please pray for the booklets, for the completion of the delivery. We've got gaps probably in Auckland and a little bit in Dunedin, it's a very small bit in Rolleston. Um, pray for the TV media and the web media. Finances, it's a 650 budget for Easter and Christmas together. We've got about 240 yet to raise at this point. And pray for every Christian to engage conversation. So plenty to go on there. Um, thank you, Gayan.